Hello, welcome once again to Urban X Files. My name is Keith, and today we are going to talk about a subject that is discussed worldwide and has been included in the Bible and many other religious documentations. This is, of course, the story of vampires. Now, <clears throat> I was scouring through um, the newspapers to find um, some inspiration on how to start this subject. And I found that in a lot of major cities, there has been reports in national newspapers about reports of vampires. Now, in Birmingham, they had a vampire in the year 2005. And residents of Saltley, Small Heath and Allen Rock areas of Birmingham, they were um, attacked by a man who bit them. Now, on one occasion when he attacked the passerby, neighbours came to his rescue and tried to apprehend the man. But he was said to have an unusual strength and speed and he was able to fight off the um, rescuers there was multiple um rescuers and he was able to defeat them and run off at phenomenal speed and there's also been um reports of vampires in surrey and a woman <coughs> claimed that on three separate occasions over three months between uh, from uh, i think in 1938 she was attacked by some form of vampire now it was a flying creature that attempted to bite her neck at the same location in Thornton Heath in Surrey. Now many people believed it was an animal which may have escaped from a zoo or a private collection but the mystery was never solved and what they failed to report in the papers that it wasn't an animal it was a human figure. Now next is a vampire that's it's Kobe our golden retriever puppy um, this this vampire um, is a female vampire Kobe <laughs> if he's not getting attention then he likes to make you get attention anyway, yeah the derelict Baron Hill Hall in Anglesey in Wales has a bloody history of vampirism as well now legend has it that the ghost of a young girl the youngest member of the ancestral Bulkley family still roams the grounds and this is only of an evening as common myth says vampires don't walk around in a day unless you bleed um speculation that she might be a vampire arose uh, because while the rest of the house lies in ruins, the tomb which her body was interred remains intact, locked and bolted. Strange. If this house is still there, derelict, then I think I might go and pay it an investigation. The next vampire document from newspapers is the Krogan vampire. And there are still tales of sighting of sightings of this historic monster in the Cumbrian village of Kroglin, if that's pronounced right, I'm not sure. It's with a brown shriveled face and long bony fingers. It attacked young girls in the years after the English Civil War. The story goes as Miss Cranswell was forced to go to the ground and bitten on the neck by a horrifying figure um, that climbed into her bedroom through a window. Her two brothers gave chase with pistols, but it moved too fast. They dismissed it was a lunatic that had escaped from a nearby asylum. But when the creature returned and attacked again, one brother managed to file a pistol and hit the leg, but it just escaped as easy again. Now the villagers banded together and went to the local graveyard where they found a vault with all coffins smashed but one. Inside was the mummified shriveled corpse with the leg badly damaged by a pistol ball. The next vampire sighting that was documented in newspapers is the Blandford Vampire. 
Evil steward William Doggart stole thousands of pounds after his master moved abroad from Eastbury, uh, from Eastbury House in Blandford, Dorset in the late 18th century. When his master returned, Doggart had shot himself, but that was not the end of him, because his blood-covered face was seen after dark as he stalked the village. When his body was exhumed in 1845, it was not decomposed and had a rosy tint to the cheeks. The Highgate Vampire The famous statue of Karl Marx is scary enough, but in 1969, Highgate Cemetery in North London was the location for another vampire scare. Dead animals drained of blood began appearing in the undergrowth and witnesses reported that a tall dark figure with hypnotic eyes, some even being attacked. It, it was said that a king vampire of the undead had been buried there after being brought over from Romania in a coffin and modern sat Satanists have brought it back to life. It all went a bit vampire crazy with amateur hunters digging up a number of graves until the sightings died out. Now another one is in Glasgow when a group of local schoolboys claimed to have seen a vampire with iron looking teeth. It had strangled and devoured two small boys despite there being no record of any missing children in the area. It led to hundreds of school children vampire hunting in the city's graveyards, causing a nightmare for police, if no one else. The incident was put down to a popularity of the American comic series, which contains stories about vampires. The next is the Berwick Vampire. The Northumbrian town of Berwick upon Tweed is home to one of the earliest accounts of British vampire. During the mid 12th century, writer William of Newburgh had said that a great rogue, having been buried after his death, sallied forth by contrivance, as it is believed, of Satan, out of his grave by night, and was born hither and thither, pursued by a pack of dogs with loud barkings, thus striking great terror into the neighbours and returning to his tomb before the sunlight. The locals eventually found his resting place and set his corpse alight. The next documentation of vampires in national newspapers is the Alanwick Vampire. It's known as the home of the Duke of Northumberland but in previous years it was also known as the home of one of the most terrifying vampire in the country. This particular bloodsucker had a hunched back and in the middle ages he would stalk the grounds of the castle spreading terror and disease. The local peasantry apparently grew tired of his nightly raids and they rounded on him with pitchforks and torches and reduced him to ash. The Animal Vampire In 1941, after hearing stories from local uh, locals of animals being found drained of all blood, ghost hunter Tom Robertson and his wife went to Loch Maven Castle near Lockerbie in search of evidence of the cause. Walking into the woods around the castle, leaving his wife in the car, he swiftly encountered the bodies of the small animals. He also met a tall figure dressed in sacking with a hood over its head. The creature leapt into a tree and swung away, realising he had left his wife alone. He raced back to her and he afterwards said, there is a creature slinking around in these woods, baying for blood. These are just a few stories of vampire encountered, encounters that have been documented in national newspapers. But the other side of it is the stories that have not been documented in national newspapers, which I, th I, I, I strongly believe that these are reports that wouldn't have been taken seriously and also I feel that 
also I think it would cause mass panic if there was some documented cases of these bloodsuckers roaming the streets but in a day and age where CCTV is everywhere surely there must be some sightings of these creatures now this strange case of vampirism is from 2021 so very recently now it is in paper which I won't name because I don't like the paper and um, a mysterious vampire beast has killed 50 livestock by sucking their blood dry leaving farmers terrified it could be the legendary chupacabra but Officials and vets in northern Chile are said to be baffled after dozens of baby llamas and alpacas were found with puncture wounds to their chest. The injuries do not match those made by usual predators such as pumas and foxes which normally go for the neck. Farmers claim the creature only attacks at night and does not leave any footprints to help identify or track it, further adding to local panic. Some believe it could be the mythical creature, the chupacabra, which is said to suck the blood from goats, cows and horses. Around 50 llama and alpaca corpses have been reported since November 2020 around the village of Colchain near the border of Bolivia. The mayor, Javier Garcia, was so worried he, tried, he hired a vet to study the remains of these animals and Chile's National Agricultural Livestock Service has now started investig an investigation to help solve the riddle. The local veterinary surgeon who was called in to examine the corpses could not determine what had killed them. She said that they are not the marks of predators from around the area, such as the pumas or foxes. Now only two perforations are seen at the thorax and nothing else. Apparently, from, the, from there, the animal had sucked and drained all of the blood. Apparently, from there, um, from there, the animal had sucked out all of its blood, but a more exhaustive investigation is definitely needed. A report also ruled out an attack by wild dogs, which rip apart their prey. She said from the bite, I can conclude that the animal is with the animal with a small jaw due to the size of its fangs, which are very advanced. Unlike other, primates, other predators that have them more to the sides, the mayor had said, given the concerns of neighbours, we will deliver all the information that is required so they can conclude what type of, of, what type of creature it is and how we contain it. If necessary, we will send reports to other entities to help us find the creature. It doesn't eat its meat or its entrails, and I have never seen anything like it before, which is a farmer, Louis Chokey. said, when the, anim when, the when the first animals were killed, some feared a twisted local man was doing it to seek some form of damage to his uh, neighbors. And the farmer, Juan Chokey had said, at first, when two or three deaths appeared, we thought it was just someone. But when more began to appear, we said no one could have such evil. And the deaths went on and on. My cousins told me about a creature called the Chupacabra, which left a person badly injured in the south many years ago. It scared me and we put lights with solar panels to illuminate the pens and scare this creature away. It scared me. I want them to find it so it stops doing harm. For who knows, next it could be a human or a child. He said it makes a small... He said, he said another farmer said that foxes have multiplied in the area but the recent killings do not match 
the foxes, as a fox would be unlikely to take down a pack of alpacas. It attacks at night, and the animals don't appear to defend their young. However, in both cases, the animals were removed from their place of attack, which made the investigative work quite difficult. Now, the legend of the Chupacabra means goat sucker and comes from Latin American folklore. It did get wider attention after a number of sheep and pigs died mysteriously in Puerto Rico in the 1990s. Since then, sightings have been reported as far north as the US, state of Maine, and as far as South Chile. Chupacabra has also been allegedly seen in Eastern Europe, including Russia and Kazakhstan, and in 2016, a pitchfork wielding villagers claimed to have captured the Chupacabra that was feasting on livestock in the western Ukraine. But as of yet, there have been no confirmed cases of finding the animal that had caused over 50 animals to lose all its blood with no mess no entrails no no savage destruction of animal carcasses just the blood drained from two small holes so hope you enjoyed this vampire story many many more to follow take care stay safe and see you in the next video peace